Peter Lodi Pete Laplaca was said to have been born in 1902 in Calabria, Italy. He and his family immigrated to the U.S. the following year in 1903, with the family settling in New Jersey. Pete grew up in the Lodi section of the Garden State, hence his nickname Lodi Pete. Later, as he became an older established hoodlum, he relocated to the Hasbrook Heights section of Jersey. It was alleged that Pete LaPlaca had started out as a driver bodyguard for underboss Willie Moretti. He had married into the Moretti family, so he had the trust and confidence of both his brothers-in-law, Willie and Sally Moore. LaPlaca was very close to both Moretti brothers. After Willie's midday murder in 1951 at Joe's Elbow Room, LaPlaca was absorbed into the regime of Jerry Catina. And with Jerry's later ascension into the hierarchy, it was said that LaPlaca served under several capos until he himself was elevated. Over the course of his long underworld career, Lodi Pete was known to be engaged in the gambling rackets, stolen securities and stock frauds, strong arm work, labor union racketeering and extortion. LaPlaca was said to have also had a well-earned reputation as a contract killer. Mob informants repeatedly told their FBI handlers that Lodi Pete LaPlaca was the real deal, as far as a tough guy went. It was alleged that LaPlaca had clipped so many of the Mafia's victims over the years that he bragged he had his own makeshift cemetery in the marshlands of northern New Jersey. In fact, one informant claimed that LaPlaca once told him that he had his victims planted like potatoes. Before I continue, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Lodi Pete had a police record since 1921 that included assault, gambling, policy numbers and gambling conspiracy, bribery, and obstruction of justice. One of his more high-profile arrests was in 1959. LaPlaca was picked up with two other hoodlums and bribery charges for trying to influence a juror in the ongoing income tax evasion trial of top Jewish New Jersey rackets boss Abner Longy's woman. They had been indicted and charged more than three years after Zwoman had received a hung jury in his $39,000 tax dodging trial in 1956. LaPlaca was accused of bribing an unemployed carpenter named Louis Donadio for a vote of acquittal. A third man named Anthony Santo La Rosa, who was a gas station operator, was also charged in the scheme as a material witness. The case was high profile, especially for the fact that it involved a top underworld leader. In its time, Longy's woman was one of the most powerful mob bosses in the nation. FBI investigators later charged several additional defendants, including fellow hoodlum Samuel Big Sue Katz and a second juror named Warren Andes. Ultimately, the FBI believed that underboss Jerry Katina was behind the bribery scheme. Katina and Longy's woman went way back together. In fact, it was said that Jerry had actually gotten his start in the rackets under the auspices of Zwoman back in the late 1920s. LaPlaca ended up pleading guilty in the case and received an eight-year prison sentence after Donadio testified he was offered three dollars to $5,000 for his not guilty vote, but was actually only paid $900. Bucks. His woman ended up committing suicide in his home in February 1959, soon after the bribery suspects were arrested. Lodi Pete frequented Duke's Tavern, which at that time served as a de facto headquarters of the New Jersey Ring of the Genovese family during the 1940s and 50s era. LaPlaca was said to have been close with John Duke de Noia, also a family soldier, who doubled as the owner-operator of Duke's. At one point in the early 1950s, LaPlaca served under Newark-based capo Richie the Boot Boyardo. In later years, he was placed under Gene Catina, Jerry Catina's brother, until his death in 1967, at which point it was thought that LaPlaca rose to succeed Catina as the regime head. In his new post, LaPlaca oversaw such future members as the notorious Tino Fumara and Michael Mike Cigars Coppola. His regime also controlled Teamsters Local 945, which oversaw a private garbage disposal company, truck drivers and helpers in the North Jersey area. In fact, Mobster Ernest Palmieri Sr., another LaPlaca crew member, served as a business agent for Local 945 for many years. LaPlaca was said to have utilized Palmieri as his minion in order to exercise his influence in the New Jersey solid waste industry, while Fumara served as LaPlaca's strong arm to keep everyone in line. In the late 1970s, federal and local state investigators uncovered a wide-ranging multi-million dollar plot to infiltrate, take over, and then drain a major toxic waste disposal company named Chemical Control Corporation in Elizabeth, New Jersey. In a shocking display of the Mafia's strength and ruthless tactics, 
Chemical Control became knuckled under Genovese family copper Joe Lappy after one of Lappy's men, a guy named John Albert, brought the agent Capo in to lend money to the struggling company. Soon after a large Shylock loan was extended, a cadre of Genovese soldiers started frequenting the business. Besides Albert, federal investigators documented New York City-based soldier Frank Vespasano traveling back and forth cashing company checks on behalf of Lappy, the boss of Manhattan's Lower West Side docks and reigning Capo over the Fourth Ward. Lappy was one of the most revered elder statesmen of the Genovese mob, then under the rule of boss Frank Funzi Thierry. Law enforcement authorities said that Lappy, Pete LaPlaca, and the Westchester-based Nicholas Cockeyed Nick Ritteni were collaborating together to drain the company on behalf of the mob. Both LaPlaca and Ritteni were well known as garbage racketeers and had obviously been called in by the hierarchy to help Lappy facilitate the scheme. These three top capos of the family were documented meeting together at Chemical Control's yard and facilities on several occasions by federal agents. Within months, it all came to a deadly end. One quiet evening in the spring of 1980, there was a tremendous explosion at the company's facilities in Elizabeth. The results were a raging chemical blast and a subsequent massive fire that took many days to fully extinguish. Fire Marshal said that the incident was intentional. The fire and explosion were set to destroy all evidence of toxic waste dumping, serious violations of federal and state laws, fraud, conspiracy, and the business infiltration and extortion of the business. John Albert later faced a criminal trial, but by that time both Lappy and LaPlaca had died and the others involved could not be sufficiently criminally tied to make any criminal case stick. Joe Lappy died several months after the explosion in November 1980. Peter Lodi Pete LaPlaca died several months before on December 3, 1979. He was 77 years old. You can read many more stories about New Jersey-based mobsters at Button Guys of the New York Mafia website at www.thenewyorkmafia.com. And please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let us know your thoughts about Lodi Pete in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.